Hi, I'm Dr. Mitch Harlan, and welcome to the Truth Talks podcast. Today's episode, we have the one, the only, world-renowned security influencer, Chuck Andrews. How are you, Chuck? I'm great. How are you, Mitch? Well, you know, this is kind of uh, Rogan-esque for me. Oh, it uh, is. Okay. It is. People that know you know what that probably means. People who don't need to know that uh, you know more than the average bear about a whole lot of things in this world. And, and an elk, and a monkey, <laughs> and a giraffe. Yeah, the whole zoo. That's it probably, is an honor yeah. to have you here. Yeah. Um, you know, I always thought I had a pretty big network to see friends of Chuck Network, and then I'm thinking, boy, do I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a guy that I know. Uh, he's also in Texas or down Texas. His name's Peter Struble, and he's probably they see he's the most connected man in the world. I'm saying, well, he hasn't met Chuck yet. Um, <laughs> and there, there's a lot of truth to that. Tell me, before we even get started in a lot of your stuff, tell me how in the world – you know this many people. Well, you know, look, I uh, started in the law enforcement business, you're right, as a, as a young kid. And I came to realize that life, society, business, communication, success, maintenance, failure is all relative to relationships, you know? And so that's really the nexus or the hub of it all. So basically, I started collecting business cards since I was a little kid. I have like 50,000 business cards. Um, your uh, producer, Chad, has been and seen these uh, on the wall, which is 40 feet by 20 feet in my podcast room in my home. And that's where it kind of really started. And uh, ever since then, I've maintained those and grown it and grown it and grown it to a point where we're hitting close to a couple hundred thousand people around the world who are influencers in the industry. Yeah, I mean, like, this is not a joke. Um, you know, you hooked us up with Oz. Um, he was the 13 hours in Benghazi soldier, and we, uh, yeah. um, you hooked us up with that, and that was, uh, we really appreciate that. That was a very big show for us, and, you know, it's a celebrity-type stuff. Yeah. And then there's a whole list of about 500,000 other people that we could certainly use from you. So <laughs> I think that's real important to put out here because, you know, to be an influencer, which we're going to bring up your book here in just a second, you know, that influencer is kind of something unique. Uh, the word influencer that we kind of see today is uh, how little can I wear? How how cute can I dance? Right. And you're talking about influencing millions of people. But when you talk about influence from Chuck Andrews, we're talking about world changing events. We're talking about the stuff that makes this whole place revolve around security. This is not an influencer. I, Got to tell you, I just soon not see you dance around in a bikini. But I'm telling you, the word influencer, this is really what it is supposed to mean. And so I want to talk a little bit about your book. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can do that right now. <laughs> Let's talk. We better get a good shot of this. This is right. Yes, Sir from Chuck Andrews. Now, tell us a little bit about how this came to play. Listen, everybody, Mitch, wants to do a book in life, probably. Yep. And there's so many. And I'm, I'm one of those people. And for probably 20 years of my life, you know, one day I'm going to write a book and then it's like, I'm actually going to do it. But life gets in the way, finances gets in the way, family gets in the way. And you really just have to focus and you have to do it. Everybody around the world has something to share, knowledge, best practices, new methodologies, ideals. And the best way to communicate that is obviously through a book or through a Kindle, an audiobook series. And I decided, you know, less talk, more action. Timing was right. And I said, I want to put something together for the security community, the law enforcement community, and the military community. Now, look, um, writing a book is not easy. Let's just put that out front. But there are methodologies and practices if you have the right publisher. And I shopped for five years to find the right person and persons who could help with two things, the lift and the finances as part of that. I mean, my publisher guaranteed me an ROI. Mm -hmm. Who does that? Right. Right. Is, is part of it. And I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to set up a new company, henceforth Friends of Chuck Publications, and I'm going to make me the guinea pig. And henceforth, I wrote this book for those three audiences to encourage them and to help them obviously become their own security influencer 
through what I learned in life lessons, and but I wanted them to do the same thing. So as a result, Trends of Chart Publications in the first 40 days of its launch has got a full return on investment. Six people have signed up to sign under the Friends of Chart Publications, which is really exciting. And they're going to have help now with the lift and the finance part of actually making this a reality. Mitch, I didn't know what I didn't know about writing a book, but now I do. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, the reality of this is also um, there's got to be somebody after Chuck. I mean, we don't get to stay around here forever. So you're helping pass that knowledge critical, down. Very critical. Helping other people, mentoring other people, coaching other people, helping your brethren and sister right out there too. Because you're right. They're going to take over. So you have a duty and a responsibility to do that. The book is the beginning of that for me. And then, of course, I've been mentoring and coaching for years. It's 30% of my life and that'll never change. You know, we talked a little bit about a story in uh, in the chapter about your dad. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. So in my world, I have two dads, right? My parents divorced, and I talk about this. I'm very open about uh, what happened in my life. And it kind of freaks people out, and that was the idea. Truth usually does that, That's like true. on your show. That's true. right. <laughs> That's exactly right. So I had my real dad and my stepdad, and my parents divorced when I was five years old but they remained friends. So I didn't have to go through all the trauma and drama of a typical divorce in the United States. But on the other end of the spectrum, I had to live up to two engineer expectations, <laughs> right? And so maybe I'm a little bit of an overachiever as a result. Well, sadly, my stepdad died about two uh, and a half years ago. And at the funeral, my real dad came and he was actually one of the five speakers. Now, imagine an audience with 500 people listening, and they're a little confused that a guy that died is actually up there speaking. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, if you will. <laughs> and that needed some explanation, and I had, as the MC of that event for my stepdad, who I love and miss dearly, he, my real dad, eloquently shared, you know, how, good of a guy he was and how he influenced my life, right, is part of it. Still gets to me today. Right? Yeah, I can see it, which is yeah. awesome. And, you know, with the – so, gosh, I hate to do this to you, but I got to do this to you. Okay. Because uh, truth talks. It's the way it works. Right. But, I mean, obviously, you are probably one of the most world-recognized influencers in this security business. What do you think they'd say about you now? Be proud of you? Yeah. Yeah. They uh, So – uh, obviously my real dad's around and, and, and still alive and, and he's still working today. He loves to work. We have a very strong work ethic in the Andrews family line. And, uh, he honored me by giving me his 35 year old Mont Blanc pen to assign every book going forward as a part of. So that was his way of expressing. And in the book, I talk about my real dad is a kind of a Mensa guy, not real social where my stepdad was very social and a big hunter and outdoorsman. So I got the best of both worlds here yeah. right? in a, in a really great way. But my real dad honored me in that way. And I know my stepdad would be very proud. Side note, with the death of my stepdad, I actually took my mom to the World Security Conference a couple of months ago. Clearly, she knows that I'm just her son, but she doesn't really know what it's like to have Chuck Andrews show up at a world security conference surrounded by all these colleagues and friends and, and all the craziness that happens. And she said it was the, one of the highlights of her life to be able to, and she was treated like royalty. Everybody was coming up and hugging her at the big Texas night event and uh, just, you know, another testimony. Right. And so her eyes were, were, were opened up. I, I love that. I mean, you know, you're, you're a guy that protects us all from, things that are probably unimaginable. But there's also this human aspect where, you know, mom's sitting out in the crowd, right? It's still all about relationships. That's part of the yes, sir acronym, right? She And she's very good at that, right? I, I, she was in the corner for an hour and 45 minutes with one of the most famous people in the security industry, um, the Gallagher family, very famous um, Gallagher security. And uh, uh, Lady J. Gallagher, 
They have formal titles in New Zealand. The company's based in New Zealand for an hour and 45 minutes. There, it turns out they're uh, pretty much, uh, they come from the kind of the same background and they just, this friendship instantly, right? So my mom is clearly all about relationships and it was a, she just had a great moment of opportunity to have a wonderful conversation. Those are some of the Gallagher family, some of the, the company and the people are just some of the finest people in the world. Tell me a little bit more about what's inside this book. What, what is it that uh, you really wanted to relay? What it, was the major message that you wanted to get out in your book? You too can be a security influencer, right? Your limitation is right here. You need to go out and step outside your boundaries and your comfort zone, get involved, get engaged, and don't forget maintenance. It's the failure of everything in life. Doesn't matter if it's security or a chemical maintenance operation program, it matters not. Pay attention to the little things and always follow up. The whole idea here was to teach people about the power, right, and the influence and what you can do if you use strategy, intelligence, and relationship. They're all interoperable. Intelligence allows you to make good strategy to be deployed through relationships. Relationships gives you the intel to develop the strategy. They all work together. And that's the reality of the world. And it's been very successful for me. I just happened to write a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's it's incredible because like I said, after you, there's going to be someone else, right? Yes. And the level of influence that you've obtained at this point, it's going to take a lot for the next person to, to kind of get past that and, and carry that torch on, right? It's like, it's not a, not an easy gig. And I'm glad we kind of got through a little bit of that. So I've gotten to feel like I know you pretty well. Mm-hmm. We haven't hunted together. That's when you know that you, you you're yeah, bros, right? That's the, right. The moment you walk out in a field and you're just out there in a lonesome dove, you're, you're, you're brothers right. at that point. That's right. But you know, this is true talks. And you know that I got to have some juicy <laughs> stuff. And I know you won't tell me. I'm armed and prepared. <laughs> you won't even tell me. Right. Remember, part of the success here, Mitch, is about diplomacy. It is about okay. diplomacy. <laughs> and I hate it because I want I want the whole Chuck <laughs> Andrews on this show, man. But uh, how safe are we? Well, that's uh, fairly subjective. Um Let's just suffice it to say there's a lot going on going on in the world where people, businesses, culture, um, let's call it misinformation. And people are just seem to find some comfort level about not worrying about that. But underlying is some very not pretty things. Do you think it would benefit people to know the truth or is the truth too scary? Too scary. Or uh, listen, the good Lord only allows us to use 10% (laughs) of our brain. And there's a reason why. (laughs) If we had the other 90% of it, we would either implode or explode, right? So as life is a process, there's only so much we can handle physically and emotionally. So there are a lot of truths out there that need to continue, like the, your great show here. So people are talking about it and keeping it front of center. So yeah. what is interesting is the level of influencer that you are, the level of knowledge that you have in, in the world of security. This is something that I know it probably is too scary for all of us to know. And, and people want to know if we're safe. People want to know if whatever. But... You know, simple things like even Facebook, all of these types of, of things, they're not safe, right? Well, I'm going to give you one of my classic responses to, to listen, I use Facebook, um, but I also realize that in all fairness, I'm not really a consumer, I'm a product, <laughs> right? So if you can understand and appreciate what I'm saying, this is all monetized, right? L- literally, if you're searching something and then the next thing, right? Ads pop up. That's all by design. And look, we live in a capitalistic world where you're allowed to, to, to do these things. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's very interesting because uh, now in these last few months, you see every social media company in, up in front of Congress right now. Right. Isn't that interesting? So, you know, the envelope's getting pushed. Um, just 
Proceed with caution is what I say. And it's not just Facebook. It's anything that you do and utilize in the digital world. Um, one of my friends, uh, Antoinette King, just released her book, Five Number One uh, Amazon Kindle Classifications, just like that in the first 24 hours. And her book covers for citizens, you know, basically digital security. It's a, it's a great it's a great book. I just gave her a big shout out on LinkedIn uh, today and and she's helping everybody come in the know right on how to protect yourself and your poor privacy. So you have peace. Right. And you understand people need to do more of that. They need to take responsibility because, listen, when you click literally the terms of service, it's hundreds of pages it could be hundreds and hundreds of pages you're giving up legally they can use all your information, right, in the Bible. So you got to be responsible and be discerning, right, in what you're doing. That's what I tell people. And that's the, but look, there's pros and cons to every side. And I always listen and I actually incorporate some Democratic stuff and some Republican stuff. I am not about politics. And I stopped that a long, long time ago, Mitch. I'm about patriotism, not politics, patriotism. Who can't get on board with that? Right. I mean, for real, for real. And friends of truck. What's our mantra? Dream big. Who doesn't want it? Mitch, do you dream small? I, no, I dream big. I got okay. Chuck Andrews on my show right now. There you I go. dream big. Do, do you like to have fun? I do. OK, well, nobody doesn't not not like to have fun. Right. And that's the second part of our mantra. Know how to have fun. And the last one is to get shit done. Yeah. Who doesn't like to make progress? Right. right? And get stuff done and feel good about yourself and contribute. Again, who's going to argue the friends of drug philosophy? Right. Nobody's going to argue these things, right? But my, my question is, though, what always appears, even when you do watch some political stuff, right, is this person knows something, this person knows something, this person knows something, but no one knows in totality. When it comes to security and all this stuff, I mean, obviously, you have a lot of the goods. And... My question is, is all of this information available to anyone if they knew where to look or knew where to find? Or is this just relationships all over the world where this is how you accumulate all this type of information? So it, it, it is for the most part available, but you don't know that it's available. Go back to what I said before. You don't know how to use the tools that are given to you. Look, I grew up day one, James Bond. I'm a James Bond guy. Um, my, uh, one of my dear friends, Mike Howard, who was the first chief security officer for Microsoft. Um, uh, Mike and I are like James Bond guys. He, right? uh, so, uh, he, he wrote a thing in your book. Uh, he did. And, um, uh, lots of people actually director of the U S secret service was kind enough. Uh, Mark Sullivan, uh, Ed Davis, the Boston police commissioner of marathon bombings. He's all become good friends and colleagues. Uh, of mine. And uh, that includes Mike and several other people as well. Um, I did get a couple of phone calls from, I have a lot of friends. <laughs> you do have a, your And they picked up my book and they go, uh, Chuck, I didn't see your name. My <laughs> name is not in your book. These are good people, right? You know, I'm going to blame my publisher. <laughs> it <laughs> is all in the space. It's all about the, the, the Real space estate. issue, right? And I'll apologize now. <laughs> so uh, next book. Well, you know, people... People always have this this burning question, this burning desire, and especially, you know, you get a chance to, to, again, talk to a Chuck Andrews. But, you know, people want to feel safe. They want to know they're safe. In your community, are you keeping the United States safe? I'm, uh, I, I like to feel like I am a contributor to that, along with a lot of other good people who put America first and right and taking care of people who live here and our businesses and are making the sacrifices in the role of public service through security, military, and law enforcement. So what is, what is your overall outcome at the end of the day when, again, you've got to pass a torch to somebody? What do you want your contribution to be? What is the main thing you want your contribution to be? Oh, well, you're going to hear it first on the show. I know you're going to be happy about that. We haven't even talked about this. So here's the end game for Chuck Andrews. I am going to build the Friends of Chuck Security Museum. 
I've been working on it for a few years, bits and pieces, batching piles of paper, communication, relationships, gathering intel, so I can put a strategy together. No such thing exists on planet Earth. There's no security museum. Think about it. We have the Law Enforcement Museum, National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C., and then down the street you have the Spy Museum. Um, that's about as close as you're going to get. But you don't have anything where people can go, citizens, companies, organizations, groups, associations, that could walk into a building and literally take an oversized camera and build it to be eight feet tall and walk inside the camera and see all the moving parts as part of that. You don't have a place where companies can collaborate and do research and development collaboratively under one roof with an auditorium where there's training and webinars, white paper presentations, all innovation and technology, security equipment, bolliards, uh, Lex, uh, 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 glass systems, right, that are shatterproof, bulletproof, drones flying in the back, all of this stuff, nothing like this. So the public needs to understand because with what's happened in our country in the last five years, as you well know, Seattle and Portland got most of the attention, but everybody is leaving law enforcement. And literally right now, the Police Executive Research Forum last year did a study that 45% of law enforcement are retiring. Yeah. Think about it. If you owned a company, and this is really disturbing, all your talent left. Now, if you're a citizen, it's your citizen, mm -hmm. and your wife is murdered, do you, that veteran, 25-year homicide detective who's on the rotation call, comes up at 2 in the morning and is called out, he doesn't work there anymore. He retired. And now you have someone with 1.5 years of homicide experience that only has, as we say in law, three bodies under our, yeah, <laughs> under our resume, right, to come out and work that case. Who do you want to work the case? Yeah. Well, you, you that bring talent is gone. You bring up a very oh. good topic here because this is going to segue, segue right into where I wanted to go with a little bit of this. Okay. With, you know, defunding the police and a lot of police are leaving people on the ground. The only other thing that seems to, from a citizen's perspective, is now you're talking about cameras everywhere if you're going to try and police anything. Yeah. Now you're talking about invasion of your privacy and all this other kind of stuff. Is that where we're going? Uh, private security is on the rise in a very big way. And it's not a bad thing because the rules of engagement are not under color of law. What do I mean by that? If you're a government law enforcement official and you're trying to go out there, and let me just, as a caveat, I'm still a law enforcement guy, right? This is right. going on 41 years for me. So law enforcement, the men and women that are out there working in it truly want to prevent crime and they really want to do their job, Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, right, their heart and their mind is in the right place. And, um, but we're under current conditions where they really can't. And here's a quick example, and I'll, and I'll get to what you're asking me. Back in the day, Johnny got in trouble, and we would take Johnny, and we knew that if we took him to his mom or his dad, there would be discipline, right? And that was the best way that Johnny did not need to go to jail. Jail is not an answer to everything, right? Right. And now, pretty much, you can't even do that. You have to put them through the process. So my point is, is a, the point of this is discretion has been taken away from law enforcement officers to really handle these things in an informal way to the benefit of just teaching a lesson, trying to change human behavior. Jail is surely no answers. All we create is super users yeah. that go back, right, and go through the system. Don't get me wrong. There are criminals that are violent that need to be off the streets and the key thrown away. And that's not going to change anytime soon. And the men and women, I have to say this, the law enforcement who truly desire 
to be able to do their job and protect society. That said, security is on the rise to fill the gap that law enforcement is not being allowed to do. You're going to the private security industry is a boom, like it's unprecedented, right? So you're going to see technology and camera systems, but on private property. So to answer your question, you're a law enforcement officer. You work under color of law. You are limited on how you can do the things that you can do to protect society. If you're a private security company and a private security officer, different set of rules, right? Government law, court precedent, constitution, pretty much over here on the private side. It's just the constitution. You have a legal right. And nowhere better than Texas, by the way, <laughs> to protect yourself, your property, and your family because of the laws that are there. My point is, is security, you're going to see bigger and bigger and bigger because law enforcement doesn't have the personnel, the resources, the time, and all the restrictiveness. Have you seen a law enforcement officer's uniform? I couldn't wear all that stuff anymore. Yeah. I mean, all this stuff, got to make sure it didn't, oh, by the way, it didn't happen if it's not on camera. That's crazy. You can't even trust. Now we have to rely on a camera, right? I was a fan. I didn't have to do that in my days of law enforcement. We had in-car cameras for pretty all, you know, stopping drunk drivers. That's what yep. we used. I loved it because there's the documentation. But now body-worn cameras, 24-7, there are agencies that it never turns off. So when you call your wife and you talk to your girlfriend and you go do a number two in the bathroom, it's on. Yes, this, this really happens. So I can't imagine for my sisters and brothers who are out there working every day that have to wear that. How does that affect you in your own psychology on trying to protect society when everything you're just you can't really be human? You Second can't be guess. yourself because you have to live under the auspice of a camera. Now, these are my own personal observations. No, I right? agree with you, though. To me, it's 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 really crazy. And, and I think it affects how they wish they could do their job, but they can't because of the camera. I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong and a camera proves it, but now the camera, you're, you're literally carrying a jury with you 24-7. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because the evidence is going to show. But here's what everybody forgets, Mitch. Cops are human too. We don't have 11 yeah. fingers. We have <laughs> 10 just like you. Yeah. And that's through, it's out the window. It's completely out the window. We're just citizens who are wearing a badge, going through some training, and we're going out there to try to make society better. But we're held at a standard. Better have a PhD and a JD and 20 years as a medical doctor, 30 years as a psychologist. That's really what, it, but that's not going to happen. People forget that as a result. So let's, let's transition that into even the bigger issue that we're seeing. And since you brought up Texas, mm -hmm. we'll throw Texas out there. Sure. You know, why does it seem like we can't secure these borders? I mean, we got all the security knowledge in the world. Mm. What What's going on? Is it just political or, uh, I mean, we're talking about uh, Colorado is now number two in fentanyl deaths. And that's coming straight up from the border. Mm -hmm. Why, I mean, with all the security, why, why can't we, we fix this? Well, it's not a security issue. It's a border law enforcement, politics, border control, other country issue. Yeah. <laughs> now, you see in Texas that our governor, Governor Abbott, has taken it upon himself, and I think it's called Operation Border Star. And uh, every Texas Department of Public Safety state trooper and the Texas Rangers rotate down there, I think, every 90 days. So we have, it's amassing because of whatever the politics are between Texas and the United States federal government. Again, I'm a patriot. <laughs> Am I gonna, no progress can be made talking about politics. Right, no, I in agree. In any shape, form, or fashion, right? So uh, as, as, uh, as part of that, we need to figure out, you know, where are we gonna go? How is this gonna happen? And look, you and everyone else listening to this do your homework and research as to what's really going on down there. If you want to know, go there. See for yourself. Go talk to the guys working Customs and Border Patrol, literally day in and day out. 
Don't draw all your conclusion off the AP, UP, CNN, Fox. Go do your own homework to find out what's going on down there. It seems to me that there's a lot more traffic coming across and there's so much politics involved with this. Um, I don't know what the complete answer is, but here's what I do know. You got to go there and see for yourself and draw your own conclusions. I have sources that are telling me it's not pretty. Okay. So I'm going to validate that it's not in a good place and they're really seeing it on, on the border, right. Uh, in a, in a, in a big way. And state of Texas is now through the governor as an example of taking responsibility for what Customs Border Patrol can't by virtue of politics, if you will. But those guys and gals, they want to do their job earnestly. They want to do their job and make it safer. But the situation itself, there's only so much that they can do. Now that the state of Texas is supplementing, I think they're making progress right now. That's the bottom line. We are making progress. Chuck Andrews, I mean, okay, so we we just can't end it here, right? Like we, I, I'm going to have to. Is there a Truth Talks 2? There's, there's probably like a Truth Talks 24 <laughs> with this. Because, um, again, not every day, probably actually rarely in a lifetime, someone get to sit down with a Chuck Andrews and have these discussions. And you did a very good job of dancing around me with those alligator boots like because that? no, I didn't like that. I want the, I want everything, the whole truth, <laughs> nothing but the truth. And, and I want it all, man. I want to know all that stuff, <laughs> but, uh, I appreciate you coming on our, our show. Uh, we definitely, again, want to make sure everybody sees this book. Um, this is, this is something that I think every single person needs to read to get some understanding of, of exactly what, kind of goes on in our world and I do I I, I got to be honest I, I hate scratching the surface I mean uh, I'm coming down there to hunt with you or you're coming up to hunt with me and <laughs> once you get in the woods I don't know man I you're a hard nut to crack but I'm going to try like my this damn truth this. talks in the woods series it, it true talks like in the it. woods man that would I, be something else that would be awesome very but, much so but I appreciate you know I want to I want to tell you this now, and I'm I'm being as sincere as possible. I mean, I've gotten to know you through producer Chad, and and uh, I am grateful when you hook us up with people uh, in your network. Um, we loved we loved the story with with Oz. That was just absolutely amazing, and that yeah, was and just your level of outreach and the people that you know. And we're not talking about just your run of the mill people. We're talking about people who actually make a difference in the world, like on a world global scale. I do want to stay in touch with you. I know that I've Absolutely. got a, I got a whole lot of stories. So here's what I want you to promise me. <laughs> with whatever you know finally does come to some sort of public okay. <laughs> annoying, then you can talk about it. I want that information. So there's going to be a there's going to be a Chuck Andrews probably 86 by the time we're done with all this <laughs> podcast stuff. But from the bottom of my heart, I mean, I am serious. Thank you for for supporting True Talks and Absolutely. and doing everything you do for us and. Um, it's, it's really, truly an honor to be in your presence. I appreciate it. Yeah, you guys do such a great job on Truth Talks and because you tell the truth, which is so needed in our society. I want to end with one thing. So part of this book goes to the Gratitude Initiative, a 501c3, and I want people to know that. You can buy it on Amazon like everything else in the world. Yes. Right, as part of that. And it supports the children of the United States military and law enforcement. Ah, absolutely fantastic. Chuck Andrews? Been a pleasure again. Mitch, enjoyed it. Thank you, buddy. You betcha. 